Now, he's not the Scarlet Pimpernel, just a wanted war criminal. But as they seek him here and seek him there, the former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic continues to avoid arrest. The trial of Yugoslavia's former president, Slobodan Milosevic, resumes at The Hague next week. But Karadzic and General Ratko Mladic, who've been charged with 16 counts of war crimes, including the mass slaughter of more than 7,000 Muslim men in Srebrenica in 1995, well, they remain free. Newsline asked the BBC's former war correspondent, Martin Bell, to return to Bosnia to join in the hunt for Karadzic and assess the prospects for Republika Srpska, the cont contested mini-state within a state. Plus, we wanted to know why the new Bosnian Serb leader has called on Karadzic to kill himself. In one of the most notorious corners of Europe, only the sound of the fountain breaks the silence. When the Serbs overran the supposed safe haven of Srebrenica on the 12th of July 1995, this is where they rounded up 7,500 Muslim men of military age, marched them away and executed them in cold blood in the days that followed. The worst war crime in Europe since 1945. There's a book where visitors can write their thoughts, a shared sense of grief and guilt and loss. One says, forgive us for waiting too long to act and seeing the war in 30-second sound bites on the evening news. Attempt here to express the inexpressible. A thousand victims of the massacre identified by DNA are buried in the cemetery which was controversial when it opened last November. The Serbs said it was provocative. Now it's part of the landscape. But that's not the big change. The big change is that the years of denial are over and the Bosnian Serbs at the highest level have accepted responsibility for what happened in that terrible time. Here in Republika Srpska, we set up a commission to investigate Srebrenica. When I got the report, I addressed the citizens to tell them that that massacre did take place in Srebrenica and a war crime was perpetrated there. Thousands of men were killed. All those who took part in this horrible crime should know that they will not escape their punishment. The leaders of the Bosnian Serb Ministate at the time, Rako Mladic and Radovan Karadic, are still at large despite all attempts to find them. Why have the authorities failed with so many advantages, the control of the terrain, electronic surveillance, satellites, a network of spies, a $5 million reward on offer? Everything's been tried and nothing has worked. Karadzic may have been an indifferent politician, but he's a most successful fugitive. And the longer he remains at large, the more he becomes a figure of mythology. a religious festival in the new church at Ravna Romania in Karadzic territory in southeastern Bosnia. Friends say he intends to be buried here. It's a saint's day, but in the margins of the event, trinkets and souvenirs of Karadzic and Mladic are for sale. The Serbs live their history like no other people on earth. That includes the most recent history. The Serbs have a new cemetery too at Sokolats, where 2,125 of their frontline fighters lie buried with more to follow. From start to finish of the war, the Bosnian Serb army suffered a sacrificial 30% casualty rate. Our guide is Mila van Bialica, founder of the cemetery, and arrested last year as an alleged key member of the conspiracy protecting Dr. Karadzic. Uh, Radovan Karadzic is a Serbsky hero. Radovan Karadzic is a Serb hero. Among the Serbian people, he has already become a legend, and nobody can erase that. Radovan Karadzic was a great democrat who tried to avoid the war in Bosnia. Trzezenko, how are your wounds? Yeah, they are fine. 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 Yeah, they are
It's okay now. Yeah. It's okay now. It was bad, wasn't it? It was bad. It was terrible. But I almost forget everything about it. You gave me that. Gorovica. Drzenka Djukanovic is an old friend, a frontline commander badly wounded in the war. He now edits the main Bosnian Serb newspaper. He and his paper reflect the new Serbian thinking about war crimes. Uh, what do you think about what happened in Srebrenica? It was war crime, of course. It was war crime. It was horrible what people done. I'm not part of war crime in Srebrenica. I don't want to be part of because some Serbs done something. Gentlemen, find them, put them on the court. If they are guilty, they are guilty. If they are guilty, put them in, in the rest, in the prison. 100 years, 1,000 years if it's necessary. To join in the hunt for Karadzic, Mladic is thought to be elsewhere, is to share the frustrations of the NATO force. It would be hard to find anywhere in Europe better provided with natural hiding places. For most of the six years since his disappearance, it has been a blind search, almost mission impossible. No lack of trying in all weathers. Roads sealed, cars searched, people questioned. Karadic's home repeatedly raided. Nothing found, except an angry Mrs. Karadic. Who says she doesn't know where he is. I just don't know because it is better that way. You see how the situation is here, what pressures we are under. At the height of his power, Radovan Karadic attended high days and holy days at the church in Pale. The priest beside him was Father Miomir Zekic. Today, Father Zekic is still presiding. The congregations are tiny, he says, because the people are afraid. The priest's house was raided on the 1st of April. He has S4 plastic handcuffs as a souvenir. Another priest, Father Yeremiah, was badly injured. He was falsely reported, says Father Zekic, as having said that it was the duty of priests to protect Radovan Karadzic. So what is their duty? S4 is very serious, and any time we get uh, information, any time we get a lead, we're going to pursue that lead. And if you associate yourself with that kind of network, with that kind of suspicion, you're probably going to be in harm's way. It's changed fantastically. I think it's changed enormously. Paddy Ashton, the high representative, is the most powerful man in Bosnia more powerful than any colonial governor. Catching Radovan Karadzic isn't his job, but the failure to catch Karadzic makes his job immeasurably more difficult. I would say that we have followed what I call the poison fruit, the lucky break policy. We have stood around below the tree waiting for the poison fruit to fall, waiting for the lucky break of the intercepted telephone call, which never comes. Well, I think we have to do more than that. I think you have to have a multifaceted policy. I think you have to give the tree a shake. I think you have to cut off its roots. I think you have to attack its branches. Uh, and that's what we've done. Last month, in towns across the Serbian part of Bosnia, he fired 59 senior officials. Joran Juja was one of them, accused of being an obstructionist element, of failing to overcome a culture of denial, deceit, criminality, and impunity. Uh, his view of Karadzic? Maybe he's guilty for all those crimes that Serbs are made in, in this, this war. But he's, at, according to my opinion, as much guilty as other leaders of political parties and peoples in, here in Bosnia. Not, not more, not less? Not more, not less. I cannot allow the future of the citizens of this country in, to live in peace, to be held to ransom by a few people who think that preserving a war criminal's freedom is more important than this country getting peace. It's as simple as that. Zhuzhel was one of them.
One of my Serbian friends described you as Emperor Paddy. Are mm. you comfortable with the amount of power you have? No, and nobody would be. I mean, I, when I came here, I, I, um, I described this job as having a title out of Gilbert and Sullivan and powers that would make a liberal blush. Um, so my job is to get rid of my job. Since he disappeared in 1998, Radovan Karadzic has been not only invisible, but completely silent. Not a single word, as he said in public. So we tried, of course. We rented a mobile phone. We put out the number in the right circles in Republika Srpska in the hope that he or his people might get in touch. And we did a full-page interview in Serbian Oslobodjenja, the main newspaper, hinting that we would very much like to hear directly or indirectly from him. Of course, uh, we didn't. He is in hiding not only from the International Criminal Tribunal in The Hague, but also from the media, as much his own Bosnian Serb media as the world press. It will be, I think, a masterpiece, uh, in professional masterpiece to make interview with somebody like this. Everybody in the world speak about Radovan Karadzic. For journalists, it's top 10 to, to, to speak with people like, like him. Instead of being found, he's being lost or marginalized as the political landscape changes. Pali was once a diplomatic crossroads. Former presidents, generals and UN officials beat a path to Karadzic's door. Now there's nothing. The headquarters of a hydroelectric company and a near defunct hotel. It was on this terrace that I sat 10 years ago with Jovan Zamitica, Karadzic's foreign policy advisor. And I told him, Jovan, look, you're getting weaker and your enemies are getting stronger. You're going to lose. And he said, we don't care. We really don't care. Well, they did get weaker, first militarily and now politically. So there's not so much left to Republika Srpska but the name. And that may not last for much longer. There is the sense here of an end game being played out. While Pali sleeps, Banja Luka bustles. The presidency is here, parliament is here, and the Bosnian Serb president is saying something extraordinary. When you said that Radovan Karadzic should give himself up or take care of himself, did you mean kill himself? Precisely. If I were in Radovan Karadzic's shoes, I would resort to one of two dramatic solutions. I would either surrender or kill myself. We can no longer live with the wrath of the entire world because of these two men. We Serbs have the strength to face the dark side of our past for the benefit of a brighter future. Then there's the military option. In four months' time, the NATO force hands over to a European force. The battle honor that it craves is the capture of Karadzic. Oh, I think that uh, I think we're going to get him. And, uh, I mean, we're going to get him in uh, whether he likes or not. One thing that's been clear in my guidance uh, right from the top has been uh, to make sure that no matter what happens here, as we begin to look at S-4's mission evolution, that we make the transition with the European Union forces so there will be no break, there will be no seam in the energy and the effort and the transition of this mission to go after indicted war criminals. Rumor consistently locates Radovan Karadzic in the far southeast of the country, around the village of Celebici, near the border with Montenegro, a border easily crossed on tracks both marked and unmarked. The area is underpopulated, fewer pairs of eyes to watch, and those few tend not to see. <laughs> An impromptu meeting with the village elders. They haven't seen him since 1990, they say but their sympathies are with him. First of all, the West wanted to drown the Serbs. It tries to do so today too, and they will succeed if they continue. I wish him all the best. It's worse than the Turkish times, they say. They're building a memorial to their dead in three wars in which the Serbs suffered terribly. But the Serbs who live their history are losing power to those who are seeking to remake it. A country where a world war began and a regional war recently ended is at the point of decision of whether to be Balkan or European. 
Bosnia's future is in the hands of its Serbs, as in a sense it always has been. Martin Bell reporting there. Primes. Uh, what do you think about what happened in Srebrenica? It was war crime, of course. It was war crime. It was horrible what people done. I'm not part of war crime in Srebrenica. I don't want to be part of because some Serbs done something. Gentlemen, find them, put them on the court. If they are guilty, they are guilty. If they are guilty, put them in, in the rest, in the prison. 100 years, 1,000 years if it's necessary. To join in the hunt for Karadzic, Mladic is thought to be elsewhere, is to share the frustrations of the NATO force. It would be hard to find anywhere in Europe better provided with natural hiding places. For most of the six years since his disappearance, it has been a blind search, almost mission impossible. No lack of trying in all weathers. Roads sealed, cars searched, people questioned. Karadic's home repeatedly raided. Nothing found, except an angry Mrs. Karadic. Who says she doesn't know where he is? Who at Sokolats, where 2,125 of their frontline fighters lie buried with more to follow? From start to finish of the war, the Bosnian Serb army suffered a sacrificial 30% casualty rate. Our guide is Mila van Bielitsa, founder of the cemetery, and arrested last year as an alleged key member of the conspiracy protecting Dr. Karadzic. Uh, Radovan Karadzic is a Serb hero. Radovan Karadzic is a Serb hero. Among the Serbian people, he has already become a legend, and nobody can erase that. Radovan Karadzic was a great democrat who tried to avoid the war in Bosnia. Who tried to avoid the war in Bosnia. Bosnia Herzegovina. Krzyzenko, how are your wounds? It's okay now. Yeah. It's okay now. It was bad, wasn't it? It was bad. It was terrible, but. I almost forget everything about it. You gave me that... Gorovica... Vrzenko Djukanovic is an old friend, a frontline commander badly wounded in the war. He now edits the main Bosnian Serb newspaper. Hello. He and his paper reflect the new Serbian thinking about war crimes. Now, he's not the Scarlet Pimpernel, just a wanted war criminal. But as they seek him here and seek him there, the former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic continues to avoid arrest. The trial of Yugoslavia's former president Slobodan Milosevic resumes at The Hague next week. But Karadzic and General Ratko Mladic, who've been charged with 16 counts of war crimes, including the mass slaughter of more than 7,000 Muslim men in Srebrenica in 1995, well, they remain free. Newsnight asked the BBC's former war correspondent, Martin Bell, to return to Bosnia to join in the hunt for Karadzic and assess the prospects for Republika Srpska, the cont contested mini-state within a state. Plus, we wanted to know why the new Bosnian Serb leader has called on Karadzic to kill himself. In one of the most notorious corners of Europe, only the sound of the fountain breaks the silence. When the Serbs overran the supposed safe haven of Srebrenica on the 12th of July 1995, this is where they rounded up 7,500 Muslim men of military age, marched them away and executed them in cold blood in the days that followed. The worst war crime to escape their punishment. The leaders of the Bosnian Serb mini-state at the time, Rako Mladic and Radovan Karadzic, are still at large despite all attempts to find them. Why have the authorities failed? With so many advantages, the control of the terrain, electronic surveillance, satellites, a network of spies, a five million dollar reward on offer. Everything's been tried and nothing has worked. Karadzic may have been an indifferent politician, but he's a most successful fugitive. And the longer he remains at large, the more he becomes a figure of mythology. A religious festival in the new church at Ravna, Romania, 
in Karadzic territory in southeastern Bosnia. Friends say he intends to be buried here. It's a saint's day, but in the margins of the event, trinkets and souvenirs of Karadzic and Mladic are for sale. The Serbs live their history like no other people on earth. That includes the most recent history. The Serbs have a new cemetery to him in Europe since 1945. There's a book where visitors can write their thoughts, a shared sense of grief and guilt and loss. One says, forgive us for waiting too long to act and seeing the war in 30-second sound bites on the evening news. Attempt here to express the inexpressible. A thousand victims of the massacre identified by DNA are buried in the cemetery, which was controversial when it opened last November. The Serbs said it was provocative. Now it's part of the landscape. But that's not the big change. The big change is that the years of denial are over and the Bosnian Serbs at the highest level have accepted responsibility for what happened in that terrible time. Here in Republika Srpska, we set up a commission to investigate Srebrenica. When I got the report, I addressed the citizens to tell them that that massacre did take place in Srebrenica and a war crime was perpetrated there. Thousands of men were killed. All those who took part in this horrible crime should know that they will not